Alright, welcome back to the game. Thanks for watching that introduction. Here we are in game number two in this best of three for the Starbucks Ladder Cup Season 2. Riamar, have a good night, man. Thanks for stopping by in the stream. Uh, but here we go, spawning here in the top left corner of the map, game number two, the red Protoss player, RSVP. And his opponent, in the bottom right, it's the blue Terran player, Moxie. Okay, so I really don't think Moxie played that game necessarily terribly, and that wasn't the brute force move out of RSVP. Uh, I mean, that contain going for a little while was a little bit scary. Potentially losing his third was a very real threat for RSVP to potentially deal with, but uh, Moxie just kind of, I, I don't know, I feel like that one big engagement in the middle of the map, getting caught off guard so heavily, getting sandwiched in on two different angles, losing all of his siege tanks, that was the start to the end. That was when it started spiraling out of control. Uh, when you do play mech in Starboat, it's not a lot different than that of StarCraft 2, where your production is going to be significantly lower than if you're playing, say, Bio. So you do have to be a little bit careful in that regard. You can't really afford to throw an entire army away without the ability to remax it immediately. Even if you got the bank for it, a lot of the time, between overcharges and the actual sheer factory counts, your production is going to be a little bit low. But, uh, RSVP? He didn't sweat at all that game. I don't imagine it's going to change too much more for this game. We'll see if he can keep calm head and get a cool 2-0. Send Moxie down to the loser's bracket, or if Moxie can turn this around. Again, I want to stress that there is a loser's bracket attached to this guy, so your favorite player is going down doesn't mean they're necessarily out of the tournament. Now, again, we say this every game, and I want to stress this every game. There's a good reason for it, guys. Starbo is free to play. You can learn a lot more about it at starbomod.com. But the TLDR, guys, is you don't need a StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm account. Uh, well, uh, paid one at least. You just need to uh, sign up for the free account of the Blizzard. You play this through the arcade, have some fun. Maybe you think these guys are bad. Maybe you think you can play better than them. Show me. Sign up for the next Ladder Cup. Get involved and let me cast you. I mean, whatever the case may be. Anyways, uh, Moxie's gonna scout wrong twice, sadly. Uh, or, sorry, wait. Scout wrong once. Upgrade Yo, this kinda looks, uh... Oh, never mind. I was gonna get inappropriate about this. I wonder, is the broken spire still there? Yeah. I love this, I love this thing. <coughs> Anyways, we got the Dragoon starting up here. The pretty standard opening out of RCP. The difference is he's chosen to go for the Cadrian Crystal one base rather than expanding. That's okay for the time being. And this is actually, you know what, hold the phone. Maybe not as standard of an opening. This is a really quick robo facility. Now, if we can pick off the SCV and keep this from scouting, that's going to be huge. Uh, a robo facility this early usually tends to lead towards warp prisms combined with reavers. Uh, okay, the SCV's going to scout that. I mean, he'll die. First blood. But he sees the robo. Now, what would have been really sick is if RSVP had like canceled that upon death and then swapped over to the Stargate tech or something, but. Uh, he expands instead. And it's one of the things I was talking about was possibly going to see uh, the the reavers come out sooner, but that's not the case. We actually have the observatory coming out, so uh, gets observers out, gets detection out. Spider Mind's perhaps a bit of a worrisome thing on his mind, but uh, what we have out of Moxie. Pretty standard stuff. Marines, tanks coming out quick. Marines, by the way, in Starbo, for those who don't know, they have incredibly neutered range, especially against Dragoons that have the Singularity Charge upgrade. They just don't stand a chance, even within a bunker. It's really funny, by the way, if you guys remember back when this first started up, we saw players like Beastie Cutie. You know, he'd have a bunker with Marines in it, and Dragoons could outrange them. It was a real sad thing to see. So, uh, for Moxie getting the Siege Tank out early, what this does is it gives him the range advantage over Dragoons. It can actually push them back without taking that free damage. Like, if you guys thought Stalkers kitting Marines in StarCraft 2 normally was hard and hard to watch, it's worse in Starbo, trust me, with Dragoons. But coming soon, coming down the base, we got that Viking coming out once again. Ah, uh, this is kind of cool. We didn't see a lot of usage out of that last one, but it did pick off, almost pick off one of the War Prisms last game. Uh, it provides the potential to pick off observers and, of course, always land and attack if necessary. Ah, uh, there we go. The first blood's in chat. Put a big smile on my face because it means I actually remembered to do it. Thank you, guys. Anywho, and at any rate, um, one of the big things for Moxie, again, it looks like he's playing mech. It's it's a slower build. 
Uh, not because of the actual units, but again, one of the big parts of Star Wars is they remove the reactors. So I guess technically Bio would be a little bit slow too, but the problem with Mech, in context, sorry, I'm dying all over the place here. Like a Marine's 50 minerals, right? Vulture's gonna cost way more than that. Your lowest cost unit costs a lot. Just tanks are expensive, Goliaths aren't cheap. Nothing is fun to deal with, and this is quite a big push coming out of RSVP. Now, this isn't exactly seven gateways or anything quite like that, but uh, still enough that if there weren't tanks out, this could be dangerous. Now, he does have Siege Mode that could potentially pop off here. Uh, he's trying to get the wall down to make sure Zealots don't push forward, but, I mean, this is not that big of a danger. I'm surprised... Oh, you know what? Siege Mode's not done yet. That's right. I always forget the start, but we got to research it. So, now the Siege Mode is done. Moxie's got not a lot to worry about. These tanks... Yeah, they'll hold the line, so... Pushes this back pretty decisively. Maybe if there's some zealots that would change a little bit differently, trying to worm their way in there, but dragoons are all good. Thumbs up. God, it's always funny watching those drop. So, kind of a cool thing they did, by the way, for the SCVs in this game, guys. Like, if you drop an SCV somewhere on the map, you can't, like, use it immediately. So you can't, like, drop an SCV over here and scout with it. Uh, it actually comes in blind and kind of half deactivated. It's kind of a cool thing to see. But third base being made right now, Moxie, well... I don't know, there's nothing he's going to really be able to do. He hasn't scouted, he hasn't seen the natural, he's playing a little bit blind. Uh, we don't have lighter transmitter upgraded yet, so we're not going to have scans going off all over the place. We did see a lot of scans last game after the fact, so might be something on his mind, but not something he can necessarily afford to research at the moment, as uh, pretty much everything he's doing is pretty mineral intensive. Uh, Footing a little bit of gas, but that's kind of to be expected in Starbo. Uh, third CC is coming up though, so the third base is on his mind, he's not going to try and get boxed in here for too long. Uh, one of the common things we see a lot at the time of Fighting Spirit 2 is just kind of this nice spread from here down to here. You really don't need a lot to hold a ramp like this. Just put a couple turrets uh, to keep war prisms out, you keep a wall down, and you're good to go. Uh, it's worth noting too, for those who don't know, planetary fortresses are in fact still in Starbo. One of the weird things though is that they're an unactivated, like they're a lot stronger I think, but they're an unactivated ability, not an automatic target like uh, move, so the cannon doesn't start to auto attack something that attacks. You actually have to activate it, which is uh, so weird to look at. Anyway, Siege Tank set up really nicely. If he were to scan, he would catch this Observer, which would be a really nice thing to get rid of, because it's just providing so much intel. Uh, the tank count, where the tanks are, positioning. I mean, RSVP is not going to be pushing into your blindly anytime soon. Uh, we do have the upgrades on the way as well. It's weird to watch something that we don't normally have in Starbo or upgrades, but I shouldn't say don't normally have, but rather less prioritized. Command Center coming towards the third, and this base is so nicely fortified. Uh, the problem is, I don't know. I don't think Moxie can really afford to play the defensive game against the Protoss player. Uh, some of the best things we saw, like I, I really miss that he doesn't play as much anymore. Beastie Cutie was one of my favorite players to watch because his Vulture harass was unparalleled. I mean, nobody could do what he did with Vultures. That guy was magic. But sitting here defensively like this for Moxie, okay, fine. Dragoons won't come in, they won't break down your natural anytime soon, but it also means that you're not pushing out, you're not punishing your opponent, and he could just take seven bases on the map if he wants to. In fact, that's kind of what RSVP is doing. He says, all right, I see you so heavily fortified in, I'll just expand again. And this is a really smart choice. Uh, now, pushing up here would be a bad choice for RSVP if you tried to. Of course, siege tanks have quite a bit of range, but there's that ramp to worry about. High ground vision and all that such, but... Um with the Ion Thrusters finishing up, perhaps we may start seeing some Vultures. That is the War Prism we talked about earlier too. This will sadly not get killed, but the Zealots are on top of the tanks. And that's going to force a reposition here on a Moxie. Now, if there was a second wave ready to run to the natural base, maybe four Zealots or something, this would be quite the opportunity to do that. But uh, third base lifted, SCVs pulled off, the Spuddy is down. He should hold this here. Well, actually, you know what? He's got the high ground advantage working against him in this scenario with those siege tanks firing uphill, but... I would love that Viking to finish off the little prison. However, if it dives over top of the goods, it's gonna die! So it makes a lot of sense just to kind of sit where he is right now. Alright, so he re... Uh, I guess he reclaims the base, you can say. Picks up the Observer. About time. That's providing way too much intel. Arbitrary beam on the way, so late game on the mind here of our Protoss player, but Moxie finds himself in a bit of a deficit. His armor supply is not that good. He doesn't have Spider Mines to throw down. 
Uh, Siege things are so good defensively, positionally, that he will keep these back, but I mean, it's it's just him being a little bit further behind and his opponent like, every step of the way. Uh, if you can pick that up, that'd be awesome. But uh, War Prism loaded up with Zealots once again. Uh, we didn't get to see Storm utilized last game, but he is researching it once more, so very excited to see how that's going to pan out, how that's going to play out. Thanks. Uh, I just, I don't like this style of Moxie, you guys, if we're going to be quite honest. Setting your defensively, it relies on your opponent making a mistake rather than you making a good move. But uh, he's getting all the upgrades he needs. Charon thrusters, this is, of course, or boosters, rather, can increase the range of Goliaths if you invest in any. Uh, typically, you're not going to see too many Goliaths in an army composition like this, so whether that's good or bad, that remains to be seen. But with the stasis field on the way, that's going to be huge. Up a couple of vultures get up here towards the north. You can pick up a couple of the probes. Uh, realistically, nothing too devastating or dangerous, but. Yeah, here comes some Goliaths. Here comes the upgrades as well. It's worth noting RSVP's upgrades are not exactly phenomenal, but they're not exactly far behind either. But I really want to see how those, uh, those stasis fields come into effect. There's no EMPs available, no science vessels, so we can't quite deal with them. Uh, but he's actually just going to try and run past all this. Maybe throw down a couple spider mines. Yeah, just keep diving through. The idea, of course, is to pick off some workers anywhere possible, but quite frankly, unlikely that'll happen. There are two cannons at each of these bases, don't forget, so these are made intentionally just to stop run by. But some target fire out of vultures will get him a couple more probe kills. Uh, this is quite nice, but his opponent was on such a huge probe count to begin with. I mean, when you're on 60, losing 7 is not that big of a deal. Especially when you've got 5 freaking bases. Does he even know about the top right still? No, he still doesn't know about these bases. So, Moxie right now might be thinking, okay, my opponent's on 3 bases, I'm on 3 bases. This is some pretty even footing. But that's not going to be the case. As the game stretches out and as it goes longer, RCP is going to have these extra bases to transfer to. He's already mining from them. He's in such a good spot. Uh, he's almost maxed out. Something you don't actually see that often in Starbow. Maxing out is not uh, as common as it is in StarCraft 2. But we got the Stasis Fuel already researched. We got a... Where's the Arbiter, actually? I know he made at least one, right? Right? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's just sitting. Uh, he didn't rally this forward. That's a small mistake. Uh, but what this can do with the stasis field, again, if you guys didn't catch it earlier, with these tanks still clumped up, if he throws in a stasis field, he's going to catch like eight tanks. And this just removes them from play for the duration. They can't be targeted, but they also can't target anything else. Uh, pushing into the ramp here, these supply depots are actually they can hold pretty nicely. Uh, Siege tanks, however, with a friendly fire, splash damage will allow the Zealots in. It's going to force Moxie to reposition to defend third. But if he defends the third, the Dragoons will push into the natural. So this is a terrible situation for him either way. Uh, but RSVP actually not choosing to push into the natural. Just going to keep taking control of the middle of the map. Random turrets going down. I guess maybe catch observers. The odd Arbiter flies over top of it, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but the Arbiter, I don't know if it's been revealed yet at this point. So what's kind of scary is Moxie's got to be concerned about not only Warp Prisms coming in, but also Arbiters, possible recalls, possible stasis fields. There's no turrets to be found. There's not money for it either. RCP, in the meantime, his bank is huge. And this is one of the rare scenarios where I think getting Warp Tech wouldn't be too bad. Uh, once you've got a bank, once you've got this sort of excess of minerals, the idea is that you max out quicker by re-warping in, rather than just crunching out like seven new computers. But that's a real perfectionist thing. Now he does lose one of the warp prisms, he loses two of the warp prisms, full of zealots as well. Really unfortunate, nice pick off there out of Moxie, that's the sort of move he needed to make. Pushing through the middle of the map, he'll clean up even more zealots and even more dragoons. But it's this force to the north that was waiting for him to move out. Now they're gonna pounce and go towards the natural base. Moxie though, playing this defensive style like he has all game. Too tentative to push, falls back. We got a 20 minute LiDAR transmitter upgrade coming out. What this does is it allows the command centers to scan without any cost, but instead charges and cooldowns. Uh, which is a little more effective, I suppose. Overcharges, but third base has had the depots reestablished. It's got detection up. Turrets are good to go. There were a couple of DPs made at some point in this game, but as we see, they've not really got a lot of use. They're waiting to strike. Awesome. Oh, have have that, uh, the old school voice attached to them. The death ball is real out of Moxie. Now this is really scary because again, one or two good stasis fields could just absolutely ruin his game. But the armors, they're not really 
really get any use out of this just yet. Uh, they haven't been revealed, which is really important. So there's some science for us to do to encounter this. But uh oh, uh oh, RSVP starts getting into the natural base. Moxie's production might not be enough to deal with this. In fact, he's starting to turn around with the army. Oh my god, he still doesn't know about this base. Oh my god, he still doesn't know about this base. He threw down some spider mines, thinking, How okay, if my opponent has something come out, I'll see it through the spider mines. But that's not the case. Trying to chase these dragoons down, wasting a lot of time here in the middle of the map. Moxie is starting to just bleed out. Uh, the mulch is still pushing forward. He's just got to fix his rally with his own side guild. Uh, this is really dangerous. He's just keep flooding moves into this. He's already at a deficit. He's going to have to repair about half of his army. I mean, Moxie just kind of feels like he's falling apart here. This is using to this mess. It's nonsense. Tanks coming in will finally clean this up, but. RSVP did way more damage with this thing than he should have been able to do. Massive recall goes off towards the third base while this is happening as well. Let's not forget, Moxie doesn't have a ton of bases like his opponent. Uh, RSVP has the ha entire top half of the map under his control. He takes the third base down and actually falls, not just lifts to get away. Another recall goes into the main. Who needs stasis fields if you've got recalls? The Arbiter may have fallen, but he's absolutely just stretched the attention of his opponent. Moxie is struggling to be in the right spots to deal with this. Tanks are not in range to shoot. Some of them struggling and floundering around in the back. This is getting more and more awkward. He'll clean this up, but it costs him a third, and there's not a lot of easy recovery out of this. Yes, he's a good base up here to the north, but guess what? Oh, the Dark Templar sees it. He's actually going to pick up the SCV. So dirty. So dirty. This is looking more and more like it's RSVP's game to have, guys. He's already up one in the series. This could possibly send Moxie down to the loser's bracket. He might go for one last, like, Hail Mary push. Maybe pull a couple SCVs, repair this. I don't think he's going to get a third base though, and I think he knows that as well. Uh, so one giant push might be his best bet to go full offensively, cut the production of his opponent. Because while RSVP has a lot of extra bases, only one of the bases really has, okay, I guess two of the bases have any production in it. So if he gets interior to the main, if he starts shutting down the gateways and his opponent can't produce any more, maybe this game changes around. But uh, scanning perhaps a little too late, realizing, oh Jesus, my opponent has these extra bases. I thought I was good this whole time. Little does he know that RCP has been operating off of five bases for almost 10 minutes now. And let's not forget, look at that bank for RCP, guys. You don't see banks a lot in Starvo. <coughs> well, one thing's for certain. Uh, Moxie is probably going to lose this game if he keeps playing passively like this. He can't sit around for too much longer. I like the attempt to retake the third, but that's going to get shut down here so quickly. A little bit of time is bought for Spider Mines in the middle of the map, but that's it. A little bit of time. That's more borrowed than it is bought. Scans going down left and right. More gateways coming in because RSVP is just saying, like, how can I spend my money? I've got 3,000 minerals. What's the best way to utilize it? I guess make it so I can remax faster. Tanks are going to get choked in on the ramp. This is why this sucks. Like, he has to move command up the ramp. He can't just A move. If he does, his army gets stuck like this. If he sieges up, he's going to lose. This command center is dead. There's no saving this. Uh, quite frankly, RCP could back away from this. No, he actually recalls out of this. Pushes into the natural. Everything is dying at this point. And Moxie. Moxie. GG.